So, welcome to the first event in the new insurance webinar series. And thanks a lot for your interest and the opportunity to share the learnings of our upskilling journey and our atelier program with all of you. Before we dive into the content, please let me introduce uh, today's speakers. Uh, my name is Daniela Damm. I'm the Divisional Operational Officer of Group Risk Management at Swiss Re, and I'm one of the sponsors of the Atelier program. It is my pleasure to have with me Georges Bakalukas and Claudio Rebello. Georges is the Head Model Development and, and Analytics. Um, and if you ask me, he is the mastermind, the heart and the soul behind the Atelier program. Claudio is a model validation actuary by profession and an R enthusiast by, by nature. And I think his enthusiasm and his engagement um, is, is, is an essential part of making Atelier not only an upskilling program, but a movement at Swiss Re. Georges will present you the Atelier program in the detail and Claudio promised to show you how we adopt and can adopt R to make actual reports more engaging, more enthusiastic and how he would say more stunning. There will be time for questions at the end. Um, you can type the questions in the text box and we will just get to it uh, once our presentation is finished. So why did Swiss Re invest in Atelier? Um, as a company, we believe that data, access to data and advanced analytics is an essential part of our strategy to make the world more resilient. Only if we embrace analytics, we will better understand the needs of our clients today and tomorrow. And it actually will help us to create better products for them that meet their needs. But it also will help us to become better and more efficient at what we are doing, be it pricing, be it underwriting, be it claims management, but also prevent and detect insurance fraud. Ultimately, we think as an industry, data analytics will, will be one step to make insurance more affordable. So thus, as a company, we started the Atelier program. I think it started at the end of 2018. Um, and literally, it was a, a very, very small group of business professionals that were truly, truly enthusiastic about new technologies at their fingertips and the opportunity that it would provide to them. What bound us all together was the vision that we need to combine the best of both worlds, both the insurance and the data world. So our idea and ambition was to take our people with their strong actual and risk background and then enhance their rucksack with data science, programming skills, and combine them with communication and visualization capabilities. We believed that this would enable them not only to automate their today's work, but actually make better access of the data, create new insights, and present these insights in a way that they are truly understood by business deciders and make an impact on Swiss Re's performance. That's how we started. So um, can we go to the next slide? So where did we end today is with a huge network of more than 1,000 members that are actively engaging uh, in a very collaborative spirit, sharing new knowledge, new technologies, and how it can be applied in, in, in the business life. Um, we have more than 20, 30 business cases on an annual basis, which ends up with 100 people, more than 100 people being upskilled um, and making a true change on Swiss Re's operation day to day. We have an 
annual lectural conference, hackathons that are well established, truly global events, and by now not only attended by actuaries across Swissby, but other professions as well. And at the end, Atelier also provides a fit for purpose workbench to our community, which, which provides them with a professional environment with advanced computing um, power. If you ask me what is the difference and what makes Atelier truly successful is the high adoption rate. If I compare it with any training that I have seen in my career, this is a true, true differentiator. Normally, when you send people to a training, they, you know, they go to a different environment, they take a break from their from their day to day business, they get tons of new ideas, they are very enthusiastic. And then there's the next Monday, a uh, 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 full, full inbox, um, lots of dif different conflicting priorities. And at the end of the week, they were hardly had a chance to adopt their learnings and, and, and put any of their ideas and learnings into practice. That's where Atelier is truly different. In my language, Atelier is a training on the job. So basically what we are doing in Atelier is we're taking a, 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 a concrete business challenge that our teams face. We are working with them, we are upskilling them to, to, to address this business challenge while they are learning. So at the end of a workshop, not only have they learned new skills, but they actually have made a change to their day-to-day -day operations. Not, and that impacts not only them, but actually also their team. So I think what Atelier is really good at is it reduces this friction between a training environment and your day-to-day -day business operation. Personally, if you ask me, and if you could go to the next slide, please, what makes Atelier successful? If you ask me the, the top three facts that make Atelier is, first of all, senior management got out of the way. It only created a space for the team to just do it and get on with it. Then secondly, Atelier is truly community-based. It's by the business community, for the business community. It really is driven by the needs for our, from our people, for our people. They speak the language, they know what is going on and what makes a difference to them. And last but not least, we have a small central team of true business professionals that are enthusiastic about new technology and that can bridge these two worlds of business and data technology. They are fast, they can adapt to new requirements and new developments. This team is led by Georges Bakalukas, and it's my pleasure to welcome him on stage to tell you about the Atelier program in detail. So welcome, Georges, and thank you. Thank you very much, Daniela. Welcome, everyone. Uh, uh, let's have a look at the agenda quickly. Um, I will spend a few minutes giving you a little bit of a background on uh, what are the motivations at the individual level for for my, me personally and others to get uh, on the data analytics journey and how we have made it work within Swiss Re. Hopefully we'll inspire others to start similar journeys. And then I will quickly pass over to my colleague Claudio, who will uh, um, show you a few automated and stunning, uh, stunning uh, output uh, that uh, he has created using some popular uh, R workflows. So if I move to the next slide, uh, if you think about it, today's world, we cannot survive really without computers. But then, provided that you know that you have to use computers, you quite often have a choice between using a graphical user interface or programming. And really what comes down to it is that programming user interface are very easy to use because you don't have a lot of things to, uh, to learn and you have information on your fingertips. 
And you can see on the left hand side uh, an application that I have used sometimes, might be uh, familiar to you. And I didn't have to think, I could give an answer. By the way, don't try it with your spouse or your partner. I tried it and it failed. I had to spend even more time coding in English afterwards to get myself out of uh, the dig I, uh, I put myself into. But let's say that you want to do something that there is no button to press to get your job done. What do you do? And up to 40 years ago, we use a big blackboard like the one you see on the right hand side. And we started doing calculations quite often by hand. Of course, there have already been uh, handheld calculators and others. But the point being is, it's not surprising or it's not surprised that Microsoft Excel has been the world's first killer app. The reason that people went to buy computers and the reason that we today have a, a desktop computer on our, on our uh, workstation is because when you have to do something that there is no button to press you down, you have to compute. At the same time, you need to achieve two things. One is to ask the computer the questions, but then also in a way that it's easy for you to ask them. And that's why programming with Excel has become so important. And we'll see later what that means in our case. So if, we, if I move to the, to the next slide, um, you heard me mentioning programming a few times, but if you think about it, the first rule about programming is that we don't talk about programming. And what I mean by that, in your next slide, uh, you will see some of the popular ways that we use to describe programming. We call it data processing, data analytics, data mining, data engineering, data science, all but programming. And you can see that uh, terms uh, come and go with fashion or with trends. And for example, if I show you uh, this uh, uh, viewer, engram viewer from Google, how data processing became quite popular from the 1960s onwards, then data analysis start to pick up and data mining um, a bit later on. So we see the levels of sophistication that people use programming with data for uh, to achieve the work. And if I give you a few examples from within Swiss Re, uh, in the next slide, um, you see the snapshots of uh, three uh, of our published uh, uh, Swiss Re publications of business reports, one from the 1960s, one from the 1980s, and one from a bit more recent, 2016. And um, I often go back to old published reports of Swiss Re and other companies because this is a nice snapshot that explains or uh, captures what was the thinking, what are the priorities, what were the ideas that influence the, the decisions and the and the things that were of concern of, of, of companies. And if you look at the 1960s, uh, we talk about investing in data processing equipment, replacing some mechanical uh, calculators with computers. So essentially you see that the data processing was the first thing that came came through across many companies and Swiss as well. And then if you look at the 1980s, we start using the word data mostly on justifying our business decision. So exiting an unpopular market. That was the year where we first justified our chairman back then the decision to, to get out of the market for, for some data quality concerns and data availability concerns. And then we move into the uh, 2000s, 2016, and the word data appears many times, and we are communicating to the investors and customers and, and, uh, and uh, our colleagues that how uh, Swiss Re uh, makes data available and makes decisions through data. It's, it's, we, we, we leave data is one of the, of the slogans that we have. So, but behind all that is really is programming. Uh, and it's quite important to, to emphasize that because uh, this is what allows us to communicate with the computer. So if I, if I go back to, uh, to the next slide, uh, um, I'll just now spend a few slides to talk a little bit about how we actually enable uh, uh, people to uh, adopt programming on the day to day in Swiss Re, a little bit more detail than um, taking from Daniela, and then I'll pass over to, 
to Claudio. So, uh, so first of all, um, we have uh, separated the atelier program into three pillars. So we have the upskilling pillar, where we have a different means of uh, helping colleagues learn, because everyone learns in a different way. We have the community pillar that helps us share uh, experiences and uh, formal informal channels of communication. And we also have the infrastructure pillar, which is also very important because um, we bridge the gap between what tools are available for business users and, and tools available for professional programmers. So we, we build a continuum across these two binary worlds. And this is a community-driven event. And at the heart of it is what we call the atelier case. So someone comes up with a real business as usual problem that they need to solve. They learn while solving it. So the new skills are applicable in other situations. They share with, with the community. Um, so essentially, we encourage other people and the community itself to, to get inspired to do more. So you solve, you share, you learn, and you share. And uh, um, I will look into a little more detail in each of the three elements in the next slide. So if, if I look back on the upskilling, we talk about having an upskilling case, an atelier case, which is like a real business problem that someone needs to, to walk through. And then we have a combination of uh, classroom style training, which is the master classes that we call, which are a little bit specific to the a use case that we have, but a little bit more generic than the actual case. Some of the shelf uh, um, training that um, we have partnered with external providers. And, but the heart of the matter happens in the live coding sessions where someone more experienced week in, week out for several months, help uh, the team that wants to solve something in actually achieving it. And this is almost like when you learn how to drive and you have someone on your next to you to help you uh, driving and then you become more confident the person then uh, is not needed anymore so it's a gradual approach of enabling the person to be able to code and understand how they can use uh, technology and data if i move to the next slide uh, that uh, describes a little bit more the five things that we actually do when we say programming. So the first thing is preparing data. No matter how prepared the data is already, there's always a transformation that we need to perform to get in the right shape for our analysis. We explore trends, we understand them, the risk, we model, and then we communicate our insights and we automate our processes. Because quite often business professionals have to do things that are hoc, but once you do it once, they might have to redo them again. And how much of it you can save time by automating it, that also helps. And Claudio, in uh, the next uh, session, will show you a specific example of, about how you can communicate your insights and automate your processes. Uh, and if I move to the next slide, I will touch a little bit on the community. Here, uh, it's quite important to have different channels of communication. We have an annual conference that brings momentum towards the upskilling cases. So if everyone knows, that they're going to present at the end of the of the season to their colleagues and others, and also invest in presentation coaching to make sure that the message that they communicate to the uh, audience is valuable to the audience. Because quite often, what technical people suffer, I have suffered in the past, is we spend a lot of time doing analysis and we have no time to to prepare to present. Some informal channels with MS Teams, we have some monthly meetups. And we also have to devote some best practices, which are very important because quite often there's no material available there about how someone who is a business professional, have been using Excel all their life, can start using programming and use uh, version control, use uh, uh, build pipelines using uh, data protection uh, um, guidances to make sure that they, they do best practice. So these are the things that we, we have added to, to the program. And the next slide talks a little bit about the uh, workbench that we have. Um, quite often, the upskilling makes people aware about the new skills that they have, but also uh, is challenging about how you get access to the tools that you are required to um, perform your analysis. 
And so there we partner with the technology departments and the IT departments where we, we make some tools that traditionally have been available only to uh, the software part of the organization to business users. And also along with that, uh, introduce the concept of agile product management to, uh, to business professionals because uh, quite often uh, we have to collaborate with other people that use this framework. Also in the future, every, every, every company will become a software company to some extent. So the best practices, we need to adopt them. And the final reason is that quite often we, uh, we want to have fun at doing our job. We want to apply our personal vision and having a framework that is uh, flexible enough, but structured enough to allow us to apply this personal vision, help propel us forward and innovate. So these are the, the concepts here. Uh, and uh, so uh, that was this last slide of my presentation. I, I believe the next slide is the introduction to, uh, to Claudio now. So uh, I will uh, 